Hello and welcome to another video by Dream Big. And in this video, we're going to be discussing a suggested studying timeline for standardized testing. I'm Rahul and you can learn more about the college admissions process by joining Dream Big. You can learn more about us at our website dreambigforcollege.org and you can contact us at dreambigorg2021 at gmail.com. So now let's get into the paths for how you can study for standardized testing. And here's our suggested path. And this is the early option. And you'll see what I mean by early option in just a bit. So in the middle of your ninth grade, you can take SAT and ACT mock tests and decide which test you will take as that can be a difficult decision for some students. Then the second step on the path is to either enroll in summer SAT classes offered by some organization, or you can also do some self-studying to learn strategies to improve your score. Then once you feel comfortable in you know, your early sophomore year between August and November, take an administered SAT and ACT exam, an official one, and then between December and May of your sophomore year, if you're not happy with your previous score, you can retake, retake it for the second time in your time frame. Then in August of your junior year, if you're not happy with your first two scores, you can take it a third time. And we do not, and colleges do not recommend that you take the SAT or the ACT more than three times, and three should really be the maximum number of times you take it, whether you're, you're happy or not with your score by that time. And so if you notice with this path, you can pause the video here to take a quick look at it. You'll be done with all the standardized testing by the start of your junior year. And I'll get into soon why that's really advantageous and why it can be um, not so advantageous at times as well. So here's a more common op option that you might hear people taking. So it's pretty much delayed by a year. So you basically start instead of the middle of your ninth grade as shown by this previous slide, you will start in the middle of your 10th grade. And you'll notice that this may end up taking you all the way to the August of your senior year if you're not happy with your score the first two times. And that's gonna be when you start applying for colleges. And if you allow your standardized testing to get this far into your high school journey, it can get stressful. So what are the pros and cons of the two paths? So the advantages of starting in ninth grade summer or early ninth grade itself is it'll take away some of your stress in junior year, which can be, which we all know is a year you may be taking several APs in and juggling several APs, your extracurriculars and your SAT courses can be quite difficult. The one disadvantage is, one disadvantage is that some colleges, an example being CMU, do not accept SAT scores taken before the summer of 10th grade. So if you're applying to CMU and um, by the time you're applying, if they still require SAT scores or ACT scores and they don't allow you to submit anything before the summer of 10th grade, then you won't be able to apply, that, apply to that university if you don't take the standardized test again. But that's only one disadvantage and that only applies to a certain set of schools. Um, the advantage of taking it in 10th grade summer is that a student may be more comfortable with the test itself as they grow older because they may learn more math concepts, um, they, more have, they may have more experience with reading passages and doing the writing section. And once again, the disadvantage is the stress that can come along with it if standardized testing does take you through all of your junior year and your senior year. So the final decision, as I highlighted, does depend on the student. Um, so each student's different and based on the student's, you know, interest, their schedule in their junior year, um, their decision will definitely change. And there's a lot of text on this slide, so I'll, I'll like to quickly speak from a personal point of view. Um, and I would really recommend the ninth grade summer path. And that's because having that, starting that extra one year early really gives you a lot of leeway in your junior year to focus on your academics and extracurriculars as standardized testing can end up taking a lot of time out of your day because just one practice test is three or more hours. And if you're checking your answers, that can take up to four, even five hours. And so in junior year, when you may have a lot of homework, you may want to focus on your extracurriculars. If standardized testing can come into your way, it, it could end up being really, really difficult. Um, but then again, if you're a student that would prefer starting it in the 10th grade summer, by all means, go ahead. And a lot of students do do that and do get through high school like that. So once again, the key point from this video is we suggest getting an early start, but the final decision does depend on the student. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions, feel free to put it in the comment section um, or you can email us. You can join the group chat at the link provided and also visit our website. And our next video is what will be a good score on the SET or ACT? 
A lot of people have a question on what is considered a good score, and we'll get into that. Thanks for watching once again, and we'll see you in the next one.